A few weeks ago, Microsoft invited us to a very private and exclusive screening of the extended edition of Halo 4 Forward Unto Dawn, weeks before it all aired on Machinima. After the screening, there was a Q&A session with Stuart Hendler, the director, and actress Anna Popperwell. The session does include some spoilers, so only watch when you've seen all five parts. So I'm just going to start with you, uh, Stuart. Sure. As, uh, I understand it, you're, you're, you're a, a Halo fan, you've uh, been through the whole thing. Yes. Um, and uh, so I, I guess my first question is, as, a, you know, as, the, as the director, how, how important is it that you are imbued with the whole sort of Halo universe coming to directing this, uh, this digital live action series? Sure. Uh, I, well, I mean, I'm biased, but I think it's super important. Um, Halo has an insanely passionate, uh, discerning, some would say picky, rabid fan base. Uh, so we knew jumping into this that they were going to be hyper uh, detailed in their mm -hmm. sort of appreciation analysis of this. So I think one of the things that 343 was certainly looking for in who they hired was somebody who knew the Halo world. Right. Um, but they also wanted this project to be something that would be accessible to non-Halo fans. So that was sort of our yep. our challenge, right, was to make something that would speak to the fans, but also you didn't have to know anything to come into it. And what was the um, the relationship between you as the director and 343 and the development of the of the script? How did that work? Did you come to it already made, or was it something that was developed with you on board? How, how did that work? Uh, the The writers were hired about a week before I was hired, so the script writing process began basically when I jumped on board. So I got to be um, in the trenches from the very first stages, and um, Microsoft, like Frank O'Connor and and all the team at Three Four Three, were hyper involved with the writing process, mm -hmm. um, it, which is fantastic, which is an amazing luxury to have because those guys. It's an incredibly dense myth mythology. It's an incredibly um, nuanced storyline and mm -hmm. so to have the people who have it all in their brain yep. in the room with you and at your disposal was amazing. I don't think we probably could have done it without them. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so I jumped on board right at the beginning of the process and it was sort of like, okay, we have a 150,000 year timeline. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> where, and where in this timeline do we want to tell our story? Um, and once we kind of figured out where we wanted to focus on it, it evolved from there. Okay. And then the, obviously the, the writing took how long? How, 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 how long a period did that, that take? Uh, the writing kept going through most of shooting, actually. Did it? Uh, yeah, we were okay. laying the, the tracks in front of the train. It was a really crazy schedule. Okay. Um, so we officially got greenlit, greenlit by Microsoft in uh, mid-January. Mm -hmm. And we shot in... Uh, we were prepping basically instantaneously after that. So we were prepping having a very crude idea of what the script was going to be. And the script was being written as we were prepping. So we're like, okay, we know we have an academy, we know we have chief, let's build chief and let's get an academy and let's open an office in Vancouver and we'll just kind of take it as it comes. Okay. That's an interesting, I'll, I'll come back to the to the two writers maybe in a, in sure. a bit. So Anna, I've just learned this is the first time you've seen yeah, the, the, complete, the complete film. How does it feel? What's, uh, what are your observations about uh, the Halo um, a phenomenon and, and then this film in relation to it? Um, well, I'm, re I'm really, it's always very funny when you see something for the first time because you can only really uh, be scared and, and watch yourself. Mm -hmm. But I really, I actually really enjoyed it and mm -hmm. I think it's going to be, I know the, the first two episodes that are out are very uh, narrative and set up the story yep. and set up the, the world for those who aren't familiar with it. And I think it's going to be a real... Well, a delight, but also a surprise. It's quite People a shock that, <laughs> that yeah. much action then comes in. Yeah. Um, but I think it's I think it's brilliant. I think it was you know this is such a huge challenge to make for for everyone involved to try and make something which conveys with adequate scope and scale a sense of the Halo universe that has a strong narrative that supports the action that has some really killer action sequences mm -hmm. that pleases both hardcore fans of the game and is a um, interesting and and full introduction to those who don't know the game mm -hmm. um, and I think it I do think it achieves that mm -hmm. uh, this this the, the the script that I first read um, was my introduction to Halo yep. obviously I'd heard of Halo mm -hmm. but um, 
I knew very little about it. Uh, I knew that it was uh, large mm -hmm. and yeah. that it was a video game, but that was about it. Um, and uh, once I read the script, I thought, well, this is am amazing to be able to play this character in an incredibly detailed and huge universe. And then I learned that there were all these books and um, trailers and obviously there are the games, but also a lot of fan fiction and a lot of fan-made uh, stories in association with Halo. And that it's just, it's, it's this kind of vast... Uh, yeah, mythology mm -hmm. and, and law, mm -hmm. um, and that's really exciting to be a part of something like that. Was it was it quite a challenge as well? Was it quite daunting with all of that? Well, it's daunting. Or did you just sort of focus in on really just the job at hand? And I did focus in on the job at hand. It's daunting for two reasons. It's daunting because there was no way I was going to get a handle on no. every detail in this universe mm -hmm. between being cast and shooting. Mm -hmm. But it's also daunting because you're very aware that there is a huge invested audience for material like this and you don't want to disappoint them mm -hmm. um, and I think you know this was really made with with new people in mind and with people who've never like me who have very little experience of Halo before this but but also with those people in mind and we really did not want to disappoint those people. <laughs> Do you feel that as a kind of a pressure though that that you know that you don't want to let the, the, the core fans down in any way and that there's pressure on all of you to deliver something that meets their expectations. Definitely. Yeah. 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 I blame the core fans for the fact yeah. that I haven't <laughs> slept in eight months. But it's not, it's I mean, it's terrifying. But great. But also great because it's that many people that are also eager to see what you present. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it was a really wonderful few days where we had these um, lovely, lovely super fans on set. And uh, they didn't know that they were going to get to meet Master Chief. Okay. Banana, Daniel Cobble. Mm -hmm. And um, he sort of he, he always sort of tapped them on the shoulder and they turned around. It was like watching four year olds speak Father was Christmas. It? Did he speak? <laughs> <laughs> they were so overjoyed. Yeah. And that he, was, was he in costume or was he yeah, in costume? No, he was in costume. He was, so he spoke costume. like that with as well. Yeah, 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 no, no, he was in costume. But it was okay. just that's so you know, that that's exactly it. It's so daunting because you don't want to disappoint people. Mm. But it's wonderful because mm. hopefully you make something that, that a lot of people have been wanting for a long time. Mm -hmm. And they're, you know, interested and critical. And, 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 <laughs> and, and the way, Stuart, that, it, that it's distributed, you know, in terms of its sort of five, five episodes over yeah. five weeks, roughly yeah. 20, 20 minutes, 15 minutes each 15 episode minutes, sort of thing. Um, was that, did, what sort of effect did that have on the narrative? Or did you start with a 90 minute piece and then break it? up into its constituent parts, how did that work? Yes and yes. Um, super bizarre writing process. I come from features which almost always have like a three act structure, it's very straightforward. You mm -hmm. can kind of paint by numbers, the first act sets up the characters and then 28 pages in something bad happens and you spend the next 30, 40 pages going on a crazy you know, ride with the characters and then something, all hope is lost and then you recover and yep. it ends. Like that's, that's the formula, it's easy. With this, we knew that it was going to be distributed over five weeks. So basically, we looked at it as sort of like a five-act uh, movie or a five-act piece of television. Um, but we wanted to write something that was linear and sort of had an A and a B, um, beginning and end yep. point, and then chop it up. Um, but it is interesting. This is the first time I've watched it as a feature with like a, with all together. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right, okay. I mean, I've watched it like for quality control and stuff, but, yep. but it's very different watching it in a room with other people who are seeing it for the first time. Yep. And it's it's interesting because it plays very differently as a movie than yep. it, I think it plays as a series. And I I don't know. I don't know which one I like better, but I feel like it's... In, if you watch it as a movie, it takes like half the movie before anything really happens. So yep. I'm kind of interested to hear what people's yep. responses to that. It's a very slow burn at the beginning. If you watch it as a series, like you can kind of enjoy those, those first few episodes as just like setting up the world and... You know, they're light on action, but it's it's intended to be like, hey, welcome to. So in a, in, a, in a way, it's it's got to be both. In it's, a way, yeah, it's, it has to live on both. Exactly. Sides sides presumably, it's being put back together because it's going to be part of a of a package that will be yeah. you know um, available for sale. Yeah. Um, I believe it's also going to be a, a DVD. Is that right? On. Uh, I've right? heard it's in the in the U.S. for sure. I've heard okay. it may not be here. Yeah, I'm not okay. sure. And then it's also got to work as a as a episodic. Right. So let's ask the audience, yeah. what did you all think, and would you like to ask some questions for Anna and Stuart? 
be brittle. Don't yeah. be shy. <laughs> or not, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Um, when you were making this, turning your video game into a uh, live action thing, did you, uh, have, were you worried at all about doing another Super Mario Brothers? <laughs> uh, you mean in terms of like a bad video game adaptation kind of thing? Yeah. Yeah, I, there's, um, there's more examples of what not to do in this world than I think there are examples of what to do. So we were super scared. Um, I think part of the reason why we made this about this new group of characters in the Halo world as opposed to focusing on like a retread or retelling of what the gameplay is, is because um, it feels like movies that have tried to sort of just be the be-all, end-all feature version of the video game you've already played don't seem to work as well. So we wanted to, and Chief is a really tricky character to, to put on film because he's you. You know, you are him most of the time when you play the games. And you never see his face, and he's enigmatic, and he's mysterious, and he's like gruff and doesn't say a lot. Yeah. So we knew that if we tried to like bite off too much and explain Chief too much, we wouldn't do him justice because he's always going to be more awesome in your head than we're going to make him on the screen. So that was where the idea for these sort of kids, basically, using them as like a mirror um, to show what Chief is like by showing their effect or his effect on them. Um, and that's kind of this sort of Red Dawn vibe that we came up with. It's like, okay, let's get to know these kids, let's like them, and then let's have Chief show up, and let's understand what Chief is by seeing how he inspires and affects these kids. Any other questions? Yeah. How did you feel when you read that your character wasn't going to make it to the end? <laughs> um, actually, I, I was terrified, because I think bad death scenes are some of the worst scenes in movies ever. Um, and I was quite terrified of having the co camera on my face whilst I actually expired. <laughs> um, but uh, I don't know. I, I, I hope I was sad when I read it. I hope it makes people sad. That's what it's meant to do. Otherwise, I'll have portrayed a deeply unlikable <laughs> character. Um, I think it's unexpected for sure. It's very I mean, yeah. Can I survey you guys? Like, did you call that at all? No. 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 I expect half the characters to die. Cool. I mean, that's what we wanted to do, is make some choices that were surprising, at least. I think, hopefully, also, it's ironic, because she's meant to be this really competent soldier early on, and obviously this is set This is set at a really interesting point in Halo history, when <laughs> the war with the insurrectionists turns into the war with every other species in the universe. So, yeah. um, the, like, the fact that Kyla dies is, is so tied up with that, is that she's been training for a completely different war than uh, yeah. she ends up fighting. Yeah. Yeah. It was a bit of a wash moment, really, wasn't it? From Serenity. What do you mean a wash moment? From Serenity. Of like I'm not the biggest Serenity fan, so that one is going uh, <laughs> to land on me. Tell but us about it. What, yeah, does that what does that mean? mean? Well, Wash is one of the main characters, and who, who hasn't seen Serenity? It got cancelled like 10 years ago, so don't worry about it. Okay, alright. No, I know I should have. So, so Wash, I mean, Wash dies? Yeah. Got it. Unexpectedly. Alright. Well, you've just ruined it now. Yeah, there you go. We'll have to go and watch it. Well, if you haven't seen it, then. Shame on you. Stuart, was there a checklist of things you had to kind of jam in for all the, the mega Halo fans? Obviously, the radar, you had the guns, you had. Scripting noob in there. I think Frank <laughs> O'Connor was in there as a janitor at one point or something. Hell yeah. Was, did you feel you had to get all of those things in? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I don't know that we got everything we could ever have wanted to get in, but we definitely spent as much time as we could trying to like squeeze as much as fit organically into the story, except for maybe Frank as a janitor, which comes at the most bizarre time. It's like this super emotional scene, and I decided to cameo Frank right there, and he's like, Frank is a janitor, and it's like, fuck, it takes you right out of it. That's okay. <laughs> he's in there. Uh, so yeah, we, we tried. I mean, I don't think we're ever going to nail everything, but we definitely, it's been fun to watch online people like catching stuff and noticing little like details that we put in and sound effects and... Um, stuff that they're familiar with from the games because it's like you spend a ton of time trying to get the details right and it's like four in the morning you're like why are we fucking doing this like, and then you see somebody comment and they're like oh look they actually noticed it like it's awesome it makes it really, it was definitely it's an amazing made, made with that in mind though i mean we had fact checkers on set and oh yeah people from microsoft there every day of shooting and 
but was... with a Bible of details. <laughs> <laughs> with their heads. They don't with their heads. Yeah. No, excellent. Of course. Yeah. We're saying there's, there's the no, I mean, there was no way anything was getting past them that wasn't yeah. strictly canon. Yeah. Yeah, we had somebody on set every day, for sure. It was either Frank or it was like Kevin Grace or Keith Wolfgill or Matt McClowski or whatever. And we had like the red phone if we ever needed to call. Okay. You know, we just picked up and so what, what the fuck? Sorry, an old question, but do you not feel that sometimes it breaks the fourth wall between the audience? Because there's a few moments where immediately, if you're a Halo fan, you're like, oh, oh, it's gone there. And I, I don't know if it completely changes from a film or to fan fiction as soon as that that is done. Does that yeah. make any sense? Well, no, I think it's super tricky. I mean, I honestly have not enough perspective on this thing to know like where we landed. It's really interesting to hear people's perspective like response when they watch it and to read the comments because I do think we ride that line in a really sort of bizarre way. You know, it it definitely is like trying to speak to fans and like be kind of like a wink wink nudge mm -hmm. nudge in a lot of places, but also trying to maintain like its integrity as like an actual narrative. So I I haven't slept in eight months, I said. I <laughs> I have no idea where we landed on that on that scale, but I, hopefully it's fun. I'm sure it's so dependent on the audience as member as well, because depending on how committed you are to the universe and how much knowledge you have of it, yeah. it's going to break that wall in different ways. Um, the noob thing is, is totally in the world for me. <laughs> <laughs> Glass smash. <laughs> Would you do it again? Would I do this again? Yeah. Oh yeah. This has been the funnest project I've ever worked on, like far away. For sure. Hardest, but funnest. It's the funnest word, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, just incredible. Incredible material and incredible like end um, result. When you know that the fan base is already there, you know that like there's a built-in audience. It's really gratifying to know like the hard work is worth something, even if they hate it. At least they're paying attention. So, did you get to ride in the warthog? <laughs> yes, yes. I've been asked a lot if I got to drive the warthog, and I would never trust myself to drive that thing. That was like our star prop. And there was only one man who knew how to work it. There was only one man in the world who could properly drive that thing. Chief. And I would have crashed <laughs> it. <laughs> Chief. Chief didn't even Chief think. Chief works for Wenzel now. Yeah. It's just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 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 I don't think I can tell you um, without like three more glasses of wine, but it's publicized as five to ten million. Sure, um, that's accurate. We are in between those two numbers. What sort of tricks did you use to you know, make the special effects go as far as they do? Because they looked impressive. Um, I, I think that we got a lot of mileage out of the fact that everybody really loves Halo, um, and we had this. I called it the H word. We had this sort of amazing phenomenon where you'd call a crew member or a visual effects house or a prop manufacturing company and you'd say like, hey, we're doing this web series. And they'd be like, ha, and you're like, it's for Halo. And they'd be like, oh. And suddenly the door sort of swung wide open because everybody wants to be in the Halo business. Either they have grown up with the brand or they just know how classy and smart it is. Um, so we, I think, got far more than we deserve to out of this budget just by the amount of passion and energy that people put into it. Like Legacy as a quick example, the, the chief suit and all the armor, um, like those are the guys that do Iron Man and all the Terminator movies, like you walk into their workshop and it's like, it's like this amazing sort of... History of action movie. Yeah, it's <laughs> everything you ever thought was awesome is like surrounding you and they practically begged us to get to do the chief suit mm. um, and the visual effects house, you know, like they, they did this at, I mean, off the record, at a loss, like they wanted to do this so badly that they just dedicated, you know, a year of 200 people working on 500 effect shots for this thing. So uh, if this were like, you know, the My Little Pony web series, we probably would not. <laughs> Are you making that? Yeah, that's next. Can I be in that? Spoiler. <laughs> and um, a couple of final questions just to wrap up. Do you think that this this sort of filmmaking, this sort of method of distribution will happen more often now? Do you think it's a sort of uh, carving a kind of a, uh, an innovation sort of uh, leading edge kind of um, approach to, particularly I, for, for extending the reach of games? Yeah, I'm biased, but I think so. Um, I hope so. I feel like it's less of a question of 
whether it's going to happen, but more how and when it's going to mm -hmm. happen. The web is like such a legitimate sort of distribution portal at this point. Um, and I think it's just a matter of time before people start making really, really high class, high quality content for that portal. Um, you know, if, if any brand can do it, can sort of pave the way, I think it's probably Halo. And the goal definitely was to sort of jump out of the gate and say like, look, this is, you've heard the word web series before, but hopefully this will sort of mm -hmm. define your understanding of what kind of production values and, and energy and resources go into a web series. Um, so we'll see. I mean, I, I guess we'll all find out in the next couple of years. But I hope so. Cool. And uh, Anna, final question for you is: uh, Did you did you have a have a ball making it, and how does it compare to Narnia? <laughs> <laughs> um, I had the best time making this. I think actually one of the most surprising things about obviously you're focused on the job, but my memories of making this are of me constantly laughing mm -hmm. and true. having a, a fantastic time. Yeah, pretty much every time you cut giggling. out of a shot of her, she's so I'm slapping. giggling. Yeah, and so. <laughs> This is very serious compared to my memory of, of, of shooting it, but um, I, I don't know that I can make some tenuous Narnia comparisons for you, but I, I, I suppose the thing they have in common is that they both have um, very invested uh, uh, existing audiences, mm -hmm. um, and in both circumstances I've been uh, terrified of disappointing people. Um, <laughs> But uh, this is uh, this is a, another fantasy world, but a very different one. Well, look, I'd like to just like to thank you both very much indeed for, for coming along and uh, yeah. talking to us. So please, thanks for having us.